welcome to the Bosch Cast with James Boschman and Denise Young, where we talk about Manitoba real estate and everything else that's on our minds. Good morning, everyone. How's it going? Good morning. It's James and, uh, and Denise. <laughs> and uh, it's been a minute since we've jumped on a on a podcast, and a lot has happened, I guess, since the last time we we did one of these um what has happened what has uh, happened bank of canada has um decided to pause their rate hiking uh for the second meeting in a row mm -hmm. i think the last time we did this podcast was What's prior. The last time we paused? yeah um so uh my predictions were correct <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> and uh, hopefully they will continue on this path of pausing or um, reducing rates, um, which would be nice. Um, what else has happened? Um, we had our first snowfall yesterday. Yes. So I'm celebrating by wearing my orange toque, <laughs> getting ready for... Uh, getting ready for what's to come. Right. Yeah. And I definitely was not prepared for it. It's no. Like after 33 years of living with this, you'd think you'd be more prepared, but no. <laughs> I know some years it takes us by surprise. This year we happen to get all of our chores done. I have my winter tires on already. Yeah. Uh, yeah so maybe it's my fault because I did get them on last Sunday. Yeah. And, um, yeah, got out, you know, the winter sump hose put on and, um, you know, um, James cleaned the HRV the other day, oh, <laughs> got yeah. everything ready for, for winter. Yeah. We yeah. haven't turned on our heat yet, but I think that's coming. Yeah. 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 We, um, we did the sump hose thing. Um, we, we, we have a frost free tap on our house, but I yeah. still made sure that it was shut off and, uh, and, uh, bled the line just yeah. to make sure you never know. Yeah. 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 We always like to drain the hoses and make sure that they're nicely tucked away. I put all the yeah. lawn ornaments away in the deck box and yeah. Yeah. Just we got a, we got a hot tub. Um, Oh yeah. This year. So it's been a little bit more maintenance, you know, just being outside in general, a little bit more maintenance yeah. with that. And, you know, it kind of forces me to pay attention to everything else now and um, while I'm outside. But um, yeah, no, it's been, um, we're really excited to to use the, the hot tub. It's, it's about. This is the perfect time of year for it. Oh yeah, it's amazing. But yeah. it's about, um, in terms of distance away from our closest outside door, it's about oh 16 feet away oh yeah so and then when you get out of our house in the back we have like a like a storm door and then you open the storm door and then you go into a three season sunroom which is already unbearably cold in there right um so that's about 12 feet so 16 plus 12 is 28 oh, so we wow. have about 28 feet let's just call it 30 feet yeah from the warmth to the hot tub <laughs> like, <laughs> by the house yeah so that's gonna be really interesting in you know minus 40. so you need some really nice robes and a yeah towel warmer <laughs> exactly yeah and uh so we haven't bought those yet but you know early christmas presents likely yeah <laughs> um got to make sure that we have a shovel back there now yeah we never used to really worry about shoveling the deck until it would get really really piled up with snow yeah uh because our dog is she loves the snow and yeah um, she doesn't need paths <laughs> no she, she just makes her own path but now we we have to because of the hot tub so uh, yeah. have to look into buying buying like a little shovel for that for our deck one of my clients has these um, mats that she put on her deck and on her stairs because she has dogs mm. and um, it melts the snow. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> That'd be awesome for by the hot tub. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. So, but I'm excited. I want to do the whole, um, you know, go in the hot tub and then jump out, jump into the snow, do a couple snow angels and then jump back into the hot tub. Yeah. Do like a kind of like a thermia experience. <laughs> <laughs> a lot cold. I don't know. I remember it actually burning a lot more than I thought it would. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like it, it felt like, like, cause yeah, I, I loved having a hot tub, but I hated the maintenance of it. That's why yeah. we ended up getting rid of it. But it is a lot. It's a ton we, of maintenance. We went to, um, actually yesterday, uh, Tara and I went to hot tub school. Oh we yeah. Purchased our, purchased our tub through, uh, LCL spas. Yeah. Which were absolutely phenomenal to deal with. Yeah, they were. So good. And yeah, that's where we had ours from. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they have a new location now. So we, they, they said, you know, um, after you get everything up and running, you follow the instructions, um, you know, call in and book a hot tub school. Mm. You just kind of go in and they teach you all about like the chemicals and, the maintenance of it and they kind of walk you through a hot tub and um show you everything and it was like pretty informative but yeah the amount of maintenance is like holy man yeah but i guess um they she did say like if you guys ever have anything or need anything or if there's an emergency that's what we're here for just call us and we'll send out the tech yeah and uh they've been really good like we when we were getting it set up, um, I had an electrician help uh, wire it up. And uh, after it was all up and running, um, the the electronic pad where you like turn the pumps on and it shows the temperature and stuff mm -hmm. um, was glitching out. And it would, the pumps would turn on and then they would shut off and then they would turn on and shut off. So there was obviously an electrical yeah. issue. Yeah. And I phoned there and they, they sent the tech out right away and they didn't charge for that. And he just, he found that there was one little wire, like a little grommet thing that hadn't been plugged in all the way on the circuit. Oh, board. Yeah. So it was a simple fix, but um, uh, yeah. And they, they've offered, if we need help with, you know, setting it up, they would just send somebody out for free. So the customer service is really good. Over the customer there. service was amazing. I remember one time I was using it when Jameis, well, I went to use it and he was out of town. I think he was in China. Like it wasn't like he was somewhere where I could just call him and say, Hey, I'm having a problem. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, um, when I opened the hot tub, it was cold. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> I go, geez. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I called them and they like, were able to help me right away and stuff and it was like i want to say january or february so like they didn't make me wait long at all because they don't want it to freeze right yeah yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah well that's awesome um so yeah speaking about the market and you know the bank of canada yeah um so yesterday so today we're filming this it's october 26 thursday um yesterday Wednesday, October 25th, the Bank of Canada announced that they were continuing their pause on the interest rates, um, which is good news. At least they're not going up. Um, and there is a, a large percentage of the of of the economists in Canada that are basically pricing in that they will not raise rates anymore whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Um the Bank of Canada, you know, they had a pretty hawkish tone when they gave their press conference and Tiff Macklem kind of said that <clears throat> they will do whatever they need to do to continue to bring inflation down. Um, but Bank of Canada uses um, data that is lagging to make their decisions. And the, the data that they were using to make their determination is data that's been collected in August and September. Right. And, um, you know, I, I anticipate that between the, the typical seasonal slowdown that we see um, just in retail sales and stuff like that, along, you know, along with the fact that, you know, these interest rates, you know, they've, they've raised, rates 10 times since 
the beginning of this whole cycle. They're starting to bite now. And, um, you know, so you're seeing it in the grocery stores, you're seeing it in, you know, uh, people being a little bit more hesitant to, you know, spend, um, you know, doing things like trips and, you know, just spent like excessive spending in general, mm -hmm. vehicles and stuff like that. And I have a, I have a client who is a truck driver and just anecdotally, he was saying that, um, you know, he's a contracted truck driver and he was saying that, you know, trucking has, um, you know, all but, you know, completely stopped. Like it, it, it hasn't stopped, but it's slowed down significantly. And that's a pretty good sign or in indication that, you know, the economy is slowing. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot can happen between now and the next Bank of Canada meeting, which will take place in December on December 7th. And that'll be the last one before the end of the year. And, you know, right now, inflation rate sitting at 3.8%. But again, that's based on lagging data. So where it's actually sitting could be a little bit less than that. And the Bank of Canada, Tiff Macklin came out in his press conference uh, yesterday, saying that, um, you know, they're going to have to readjust their their target for inflation. They were hoping to get it down to 2% by 2024. It's likely not going to happen now until 2025 or if at all. And they've readjusted their, their goal to 3% for next year. Hmm. So um, I was listening to uh, um, Benjamin Tal, who is a very well-known economist in Canada yesterday, and he was giving his thoughts and he was saying that um, he anticipates the Bank of Canada having to come out likely as early as the end of the first quarter of next year with a rate cut. And he said that they will likely have to cut significantly. So um, <clears throat> he said it likely won't be this like delicate dance of, okay, let's do 25 basis points cut. Let's do another 25 basis points cut. He said it could be as significant as a percentage point. So going from 5% overnight to 4%. Um, and the reason for that is we may be in, we may be faced with an earlier than anticipated recession. Um, so we, we technically we're in a per capita recession and some would argue a housing recession. Um, we could be in a, in an actual recession before the end of the year. And, um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens, but, um, that would, that would trigger the bank of Canada to start cutting the rates sooner than sooner than what they're telling people. They're trying to maintain this hawkish tone of like, we're going to keep it as high as we pot we need to. Because of course, they're not going to, it's not good for the market if they just come out and say, oh yeah, we're going to start cutting by February, <laughs> you know, because then, yeah. then the market goes crazy and, and there's this big frenzy in the economy and it doesn't, it doesn't help to curb, curb the inflation. So they have to use a hawkish tone. And um, Benjamin Tao is saying that, um, it's likely the Bank of Canada knows that they've over tightened. They can they can always it's easy for them to to over tighten because they can always just loosen their right right and it's easy yeah. for them to do that. Um, but a recession would kind of force that. And um, then I then then you got to think about okay, well, what does that mean for our market? And I was thinking about this a lot yesterday and I was talking to a builder client of mine and you know, a lot of people, the higher interest rates, what they're doing is they're essentially keeping people in their houses. They're preventing people in the move up market or the downsize market from, from making that move because there's uncertainty. Now I would argue there's a little bit less uncertainty. I think there's more certainty in the market given that, you know, the, the, the market knows that the rates likely won't be going up anymore. So it can give people more of a peace of mind. Um, 
But now or, they're going to be wanting to wait for them to reduce. Right. So <laughs> if if you if you if you um, if you if you just look at the state of our market right now, we have less less inventory um, than than we typically should have around this time of year. And but we also have, you know, arguably less demand. So um, when people can qualify for what they want, which, you know, what determines what you can qualify for? I'm starting to get into our topic of the day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we may be in a situation where, um, you know, we have very little supply mm -hmm. and rates are forced to be cut and we have all this demand all of a sudden we have a lot of right. i would i would say we have a lot of pent-up demand right now people that want to move they 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 need to move but, but because of the rates or because of the uncertainty or because of their lack of qualifying for yeah. what they want um you know, it's keeping people in place. But when that wrench is turned the other way, um, I think we're going to be in a heap of trouble. <laughs> yeah. Because we're going to have such a tremendous lack of supply and an overwhelming demand for houses. Mm -hmm. And we haven't even, that's just our local market. We haven't even begun to scrub the surface of the immigration. And these people come in here with money that want to purchase property. Yeah. And so I was had this conversation with a builder yesterday who is reluctant to, you know, risk his capital and build spec homes. And I, and I know it is risky because, yeah. you know, it's a lot of money. However, I do think, and I'm quite confident that if you're a builder and it takes you on average six to eight months to take a house to completion, mm -hmm. by the time we get there, we're going to have such an overwhelming demand in our market. It's going to be the ones who have those spec homes that are going to see the largest return. I agree. On their, on their investment. Yeah, I agree. Right now is the time to start putting them in. Put the basements in the ground, yeah. but it's not happening in general developers have pulled back and they've taken the wait and see approach builders yeah. same thing and you know pe people seem to think that recessions lead to um lower prices and maybe that is the case if um, you see an overwhelming amount of inventory hit the market because of a recession like if you have people losing their jobs and they need to sell their home, right. um, you know, and you have this increase in inventory, then there's opportunity uh, in the market. But I just don't see that happening because no. people in general, the majority of, of, of Winnipeggers or Canadians, or Manitobans, they, they have a fair amount of wealth in their, in their equity and in their, in their properties, you know, um, and people will do whatever they have to do in a tough situation to avoid having the bank take their home away. And I think the government will probably step in before that even, before that even remotely happens through subsidies or grants or, you know, mm -hmm. just, you know, deferring payments or they, they will do whatever they need to do. And it's only when that dam starts to break then that you see this influx of inventory and opportunity. But I just can't see that happening, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's barely happening in the big markets that fluctuate more, right? Like yeah. even if you're looking at like Toronto, Calgary, Vancouver, like prices are still pretty steady. Yeah. Um, they're a lot more volatile than a market like Winnipeg, who's like Absolutely. steady Eddie. Yeah. Yeah. But but yeah, I guess um, maybe maybe we could get into the weekly topic, and then <laughs> and then we can get into your story. Okay, it kind of ties into you know 
Yeah, the, the weekly topic definitely ties into what's going on in the market right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people are asking, should I wait to buy a house? Yeah. Should I wait to sell my house? Mm -hmm. I... <laughs> um, yeah. But I... yeah, let's address the, should I wait to buy a house? For sure. Yeah. Let's yeah. do it. Well, the easy answer is no, don't wait. Yeah. If you can qualify at the current qualifying rate of 9.2, now is the time to buy because there's, even though there's a lack of inventory, the stuff that is out there, if it's not moving, like you actually have opportunity. Yeah. You can probably negotiate. Yeah. You can probably uh, get a home inspection. <laughs> you yeah. likely won't have to bid on multiple offers. I mean, there are definitely still houses going into multiple offers yeah. these days, but I think I yeah. counted. So I've been checking yeah. uh, weekly and I typically will check on Tuesdays or Wednesdays because that's when, you know, yeah. offer dates typically take place Mondays or Tuesdays. Right. And um, so, you, you know, if it's a clean offer or if it's an un or if it's a conditional offer from the week prior, usually the sales data will come out at the beginning of the week or in the middle of the week. Right. And so I checked yesterday and I counted seven houses in Manitoba within the Winnipeg and surrounding areas that had gone into multiple offers. However, they were and they sold for more than asking price, but they were arguably priced too low. <laughs> so oh, really? They were priced for quick sales, you know? Oh, yeah. So but the houses that are that take the you know let's price it right hold tight approach they are yeah. sitting and um you know I've, I've been seeing average like two weeks on market so like you said there's more of an opportunity for somebody to get out there and get what they want if you can qualify um then you can negotiate you can get a better deal yeah and i mean really not even have to having to blind bid is a better deal even if you pay asking right, right? like not even not having to blind bid and guess at a price mm -hmm. um is a huge thing um getting a home inspection is a huge thing to having better satisfaction once you have moved in yeah. right like you know you know the problems i mean every house has them but at least you know them ahead of time when you only had you know, I, I, I like to go back to the the 2020 to 2022 uh, sales. Like we were literally showing houses for 30 minutes and making a decision. Yeah. Not having home inspections, not having, you know, not having parents come to look at the house with you. Like it was yeah. two people in your realtor for 30 minutes. Yes, there was a yeah. lack of satisfaction. Yeah, lack of yeah. satisfaction, lack of yeah. peace of mind. Yeah, you know, exactly. competing with 15 other offers. Yeah. And, um, you know, this the ability to put conditions now, whether it be inspections or other things, possibly even the sale of your home, right? Like, it's just, again, peace of mind. The market's not what it used to be. They're not flying off the shelves. So to be able to put the, the condition to sell your house mm -hmm. is huge right now, right? Um, if, if you're able to. And I mean, we sell a lot rurally, so we're definitely seeing more of those conditions. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, if we look at like the actual stats, um, I was looking at September and inventory is down 4%, but prices are up 4%. Yeah. And that's just over last year. And over the last five year average, inventory is down 5% and prices are up 10. Yeah. Like it just shows what a steady eddy Manitoba can be, right? Like, yeah. The, um, the, the lack of inventory is yeah. definitely saving our butts right now in terms sure. of, you know, if you're a seller. Yeah. Yeah. The prices aren't going down. Prices yeah. aren't. <clears throat> stupid like they're not you're not having to take a huge bath on your sale price that's also going to help a lot of people who need to refinance when they renew their mortgage yeah you know we i, I think we're going to see a lot of people possibly needing to refinance uh you know they had you know maybe three percent five years ago and uh are now going to have to be renewing in a five and a half to six percent mm -hmm. um so you might see them using that equity to refinance so that their payments aren't crazy yeah 
Yeah. Yeah. So what would you say, um, what is the average, um, like what's a good five-year fixed rate right now? Um, well, I just talked to Katrina right before uh, we got on the call and it's uh, 5.84 is the posted rates. Okay. And she said that um, 5.69 is like a promo rate. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, see, that's actually not bad. It's not terrible. Yeah. I mean, if, if you look, I know we're all like gotten used to hearing three and under. Yeah. But I mean, that those aren't those aren't sustainable, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> those were never going to be around forever. Right. Um, this is, it's, it's, it's so funny because um, I was talking to this client about this yesterday and um, about rates. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he was talking about how at the beginning of all this, when, you know, the rate hiking cycle, cycle just started, um, every mortgage broker and their dog was talking about the, importance of variable rate mortgages so the amount of people that went into a variable rate mortgage including myself on you know both my properties yeah um you know my rate on my rate on one property has been triggered so i've had to um increase my payment um and luckily the other one hasn't been triggered yet but i be, i think that now would be the time to if, if you're going to give somebody advice as to whether or not they should go get a variable rate mortgage yeah now is looking like maybe more of a better opportunity for for a variable rate mortgage because yeah if if the consensus is that the rates aren't going to go higher and they'll only have to come down right um now's the time then now's the time or right? very short term like we very did a two year when we i mean back in june we still didn't know what was happening right yeah. like how long this was going to be for yeah. so we signed a two-year thinking well by the time two years is up yeah we'll have a better idea what the market's doing we can go back to a variable because yeah. pre-covid we were on variable yeah, but, but, but i actually locked in at the beginning of COVID oh, yeah. oh, that's <laughs> for a couple of years thinking okay like you know we don't know what the market's going to be like. And, you know, if we're relying on me to make money, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I did panic and walk in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's, um, yeah, I mean, it's hard to know for sure what mm -hmm. to do, but, um, but yeah, a you know, shorter term mortgage, shorter, shorter term right now, would yeah. probably be a good idea. I know that like I'm a gambling man, so I'm going to, take my chances and I'm going to, um, ride out. I got two more years left on the variables. So I'm yeah. going to, I'm going to ride those puppies out and, and then I'm going to look at the average at the end of the day, once those terms are up and I'm going to see if I actually, if it actually made more sense or not. Well, you know, the funny thing about me panicking, I mean, we'd never been through a pandemic before, so right. that was a little unprecedented. So it's hard to look at history, but yeah. I've had a variable rate mortgage pre-pandemic, um, probably 15 years. And we were winning, 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 winning all yeah. that time. Yeah. Right. So even if I had lost for a couple of years, yeah. it wouldn't have been the end of the world. I still would have come out ahead having had stuck with the right. variable rate in the long term. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, you're going into a pandemic, and <laughs> you know, yeah, nobody knows. Everybody thinks yeah, this guy's right. <laughs> so you know. it's hard to look at the history. So even though I've always been winning at my, <laughs> at my variable rate mortgage, yeah. I, yeah, I did panic a little. And then once you've done it, it's done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can't undo it until it's done. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, um, for a seller right now, yeah, inventory is still relatively low. So, so it's still a fine time to sell. Yeah, it's still, yeah. Um, you know, average days on market might be up a little bit. Um, yeah. But if you have a good home, I mean, we have to make sure that the emphasis on, is on making it show really well, making sure that it shows better than the competition. Yes. Um, and it's priced fairly and yeah. not overpriced because people are value shopping now and they will find the best value for them and um you know you don't want to help sell all the other houses in your neighborhood 
by having right. the highest price. I, yeah, um, exactly. So, but, um, but yeah, but if you're a buyer, you know, it is a, a fantastic time to purchase if, if you can qualify, um, you know, and you can get into the house or the area that you want, um, you, you know, because I'm, I'm going to shelter this from the rooftops if I need to, but I, I honestly think that by hmm, late spring, early summer next year, yeah, we may see an absolute shit storm again of bidding wars. Yeah. It, and it, it, I don't even think it's going to take that big of a decrease to yeah. make it happen. I mean, spring is always higher demand for buyers and I can't see the inventory increasing a whole ton. Yeah. And so when it does happen, mm -hmm. that tiny little squeak down, yeah, you're going to be paying less interest, but now you're going to have to be competing like crazy. We're yep. going to see competitions like, yep. <laughs> like we saw in 2022, right? Like, yeah. The, the overbid the price that you'll have to pay yeah. because of the amount of demand yeah. in the market will far outweigh the payment Absolutely. that you'll have any to pay savings, now. <laughs> any savings from interest rate yeah. decrease will be definitely consumed by yeah. having to overpay. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, but no, that's great. Um, yeah. Just it, looking at my notes, I think I said everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I know, uh, and again, just my personal anecdote. Um, mm -hmm. Like I'm thinking about um, purchasing. Uh, well, not thinking about it. It's it's happening. But purchasing land to build a spec home. Yeah. I'm. If I'm the way I look at it is. If I'm going to be um, telling my clients that this is what they should be doing, then I should put my own money where my mouth is, right, and do it. Awesome, yeah. And so that's what we're doing, and we're finalizing our. We just finalized our corporate documents, um, and we're going to be uh, building a spec home. Um, and I'm hoping that by the time it's ready, um, it, you know, it'll be it'll be sold. And, um, and it, cause I'm so optimistic that things are going to turn around. Um, yeah. And yeah, but <clears throat> so, yeah, so That's I'm fine. buying, um, we skipped over lots of stuff. Yeah. You got a dad joke for us. Oh yeah. Shoot. <laughs> I do have some dad jokes. I have them uh, written down actually. So. This is going to be really lame, but really awesome. <laughs> so, um, I called the paranoia. I called the paranoia hotline. They answered, "How did you get this number?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, <boy. laughs> I just started my job as an executioner. I'll be heading there soon. Hmm. <laughs> But um, um, um. <laughs> <laughs> and la last but not least, uh, my family just learned that Grandpa has an addiction to Viagra. Oh, no man. one, no one is taking it harder than Grandma. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. That one is so funny. Good. <laughs> Yeah, I tried finding some Halloween ones. Yeah, but uh, but I I I couldn't find any that I really liked. So yeah. Um. Okay. So do you want to tell get into story time? Sure, I can talk about. Um, yeah, I was digging out some winter clothes to get my car winter ready. You know, so I have like emergency gear and stuff. Yeah, it reminded me of a house I showed last year. Um. I had booked a showing at this house and it was um, online. It said it was owner occupied in the listing and all the furniture was in it and everything. So when I booked it, we got confirmed, said where the lockbox was. Mm -hmm. No other information. We get there and the driveway is like, like you go in and then to, on an angle to the house. Like the house is like way off to the right. Oh, like hundreds of feet away. 
And at least about 150 feet of, I'll say driveway, 150 feet from the, from the road to the house. And it's like knee to thigh deep of snow. Wow. And uh, I was with a pretty motivated buyer. So, yeah. <laughs> so we, uh, we trudged through the snow until we um, hit what I later saw in pictures was a retaining wall for a flower bed. Oh, God. <laughs> Because you, you have no idea where to go when everything's so covered in snow, right? Like, yeah. And, yeah, we hit this thing, and then one of us climbed over it, and one of us went around it. Yeah. And um, finally get into this house. And, like, yeah, I'm, I was in, like, runners. <laughs> wow. Um, not prepared. Yeah. No. And, and yeah, she had her boots on, but obviously still not <laughs> not adequate for this house. Yeah. Like I don't know too many people that wear boots on a regular basis that go up to their thighs. Yeah. <laughs> it was just ridiculous. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it was a lot of effort to see a house, but when you're motivated, you do it. It was an interesting house to see though, but yeah, all that to say it was big. <laughs> mm -hmm. Obviously by the time we looked at it, uh, but it wasn't interesting. The house was actually decent um and nice but the, um <laughs> i probably shared pictures when i showed it because i'm pretty sure that the shop was a grow up oh, and, uh, and there was no property disclosure or anything so um and probably was a licensed grow up i have no idea but it was definitely like a ton of different fans air conditioners tons of pots tons of a uh, water container, like yeah. the big, uh, <laughs> like uh, cisterns and Maybe they're growing uh, tomatoes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> anyway, um, it was an interesting property once we got to look around, but it was definitely a very big challenge to look around. Yeah. 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 yeah I remember um, <clears throat> one year I was showing a property. It was a rural property. It was kind of like that, but we knew it was vacant, but, uh, I have these big, like, um, hunting, well, they're kind of like duck boots. They, okay. they're completely waterproof yeah. they're like a winter rubber boot. And I know I look ridiculous, but I <laughs> always wear them in the wintertime. Yeah. And sure. so I went up to look at this house and it was, uh, uh, vacant um, and uh, same thing just they didn't plow the driveway so we parked at the end of the road and kind of trudged through and I was like paving the way with my boots yeah <laughs> for my clients yeah and uh, I wanted they, they went inside I let them in and then I wanted to walk around the outside with the husband to like just look at the state of the exterior of the house and I hit this Real thing really hard when I was trudging through the snow and I looked down and it was the concrete holding tank but the lid wasn't on all the way oh so when I I could have fallen in is what I'm saying if oh I had taken one more step the lid was it was like in the middle yeah and it was going like this <gasps> yeah so had I not kicked it like hit it as I was yeah. trying to make a path for my client, I would have definitely stepped on it and I probably would have slid into the holding tank. Oh my God. Yeah. And, um, but you know, we, we notice it and we, I opened yeah. the lid, like we, we both lifted it and we looked inside and it was just full of snow oh, it had been yeah. like that for a long time. Well, I guess though, if it's like half off, it's, of course yeah. it's going to fill up. Yeah. So <clears throat> we just closed it up. And then I told the listing agent about it and she was thankful that I called her to let her know and that I had stumbled across it and fixed it because that would have been a real shitty situation for somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. But yeah, that's oh my the, goodness. The joys of showing, we come across, eh? Yeah. The joys of showing, you know, yeah. especially rural properties in the winter time. Yes. 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 Obviously both rural. Yeah. yeah. Yes, definitely. They just bring an extra punch in the winter. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. But at least I always think, like, at least tell 
the showing agent what's happening, right? Like, so they can be prepared. You know, I, that wasn't the only property I showed last year where that situation came up, right? Like, um, but I mean, it was the only one I came unprepared to because, I wasn't warned, right? Like I, I drove all the way to Woodridge for one. And yes, they had warned me that the people had moved out last week. I don't know if the driveway will be yeah. cleared, right? So I came with giant boots and, <laughs> and a bunch of other stuff so that I could make sure me and my clients could get in there. Yeah, right? yeah, and come, yeah come prepared. Come prepared. Yeah. I can prepare my clients. I can, right? And yeah. if they're not prepared to walk through it, then they can decide to cancel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, I guess we'll end this by uh, giving some flowers to some giving local some flowers. Yeah. Businesses. Um, maybe I'll just go first quick. Sure. Um, so I, I, I know I touched on, you know, our hot tub experience. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I do actually, I should actually give a shout out to LCL spas. Okay. Um, they're located in the St. James area. Coastal Pole Park. They just moved to new new location on Barry Street. Nice. And so anybody out there is looking for a hot tub or a sauna, um, or they sell. You know, it's not the time of year for patio furniture, but they sell patio furniture. And wicked but, showers. Yeah, and I, <laughs> I, I would say one of the best customer service experiences I think I've ever had. They were just so friendly and mm -hmm. so like helpful. And going way above and beyond to show us what to do. They could have just sold us a hot tub and just said, here, watch this video or read this pamphlet and figure it out. But they were like adamant that we knew exactly what we were doing. And, um, you know, my wife was really happy with them too. Um, yeah. And like they, they gave us a great deal on the hot tub. Um, but then uh, what also like really impressed me was yesterday when we went back to this hot tub school to like learn about everything. Um, they, you know, they have their displays, their hot tub displays all over the place. So we're walking around and I was like, you know, we need to get a, a step for our hot tub. And uh, cause we built it on a pad and we have it yeah. that goes up right up to it, but there is a bit of a step to get in. Cause you have to like step over the side of the hot tub. It's about, yeah. the deck's about halfway up the tub, hot tub. Right. So still pretty decent step to get in there. And so um, our villa, the, one of the owners, she was like, Oh, um, do you guys want to step? I was like, yeah, yeah. I'm actually like, you know, pretty interested in, in getting one. She said, Oh, well, did we not give you one? And I was like, no, no, it, it didn't come with one. So then she says, okay, come with me. So then she's like, we have a gray one. We have a black one. And I was like, how much are they? She's like, for you, free. Just take it. And I, I don't know if it, they were supposed to give us one, but okay. it wasn't on the invoice. And she said, you know, it wasn't on the invoice, but, you know, you guys can just have one. And I was like, geez, that's, that's, that's awesome. Probably, probably a couple hundred bucks, you know? Yeah. So, um, you know, she gave us a bunch of stuff, like, for free chemicals. And um, when we when we first bought the hot tub, we we have well water so um it's hard water so they gave us like this little filter thing that screws onto the garden hose yeah and uh gets rid of all the all the calcium and iron and stuff and um yeah they're, they're like 90 bucks i saw it in the box yesterday it's like i was like you just gave us this for free and she was like oh yeah yeah you, you guys are great and <laughs> okay i mean i'll definitely be referring a lot of people yeah. So, but, um, yeah, really good experience with LCL spas. And then, um, I, I have two more. So I, I, I screwed up my shoulder somehow. I think it was in the gym. I'm not sure how could have been sleeping. Could have been have falling off the falling off the zip line, the zip line in friends yard. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I have a pinched nerve, like an impinged nerve oh. in my shoulder. So when I yeah. move my arm up like this, it oh. really hurts. Yeah. And so I went to chiropractor. And uh, so I go to see Dr. Taylor um, on Henderson and I really like him. He's, he's great. Like he'll do a full body assessment and um, you know, he's not just like 
snap crackle pop type of chiropractor like he shows you almost like a physiotherapist and he kind of shows you different exercises that you can do using different ball, like balls or mm -hmm. um, hot and cold packs and um you know even different like um body movement exercises that you can use to um that you can do to you know um help build the muscle around it yeah um, fix the weakness yeah. yeah fix the weakness and um yeah so he did the he snapped me up pretty good and now i'm feeling i'm feeling great but i'll i'll be going back probably five or six more times yeah so um and then um empty cup mm -hmm. so um you know being that we're at a cloud-based brokerage i meet people a lot at coffee shops and um which i like and um but one of my favorite places um to go has been empty cup this, particularly the one in sage creek oh okay i, really I was like gonna say which location <laughs> yeah sage creek is good the yeah. one on Janet is good because i go to the good life gym right behind the one on oh, okay and um i had to stop in there i'm i i have uh an addiction to these <laughs> yeah nitro coffees yeah this is like a freaking double a battery right to my brain and, <laughs> um but they're unsweetened uh black nitro coffee so it's just coffee nice. and water basically yeah um but oh i'm they're so good they're so smooth and yeah. uh last time i was in there i bought a case so, <laughs> that's uh, awesome i want to buy a keg of it and get a tap but um they did a collab with uh tcb once and i remember james loving that like it was like yeah. coffee beer <laughs> yeah yeah so good yeah they just have great really great coffee like mm -hmm. um, and they and they do have beer on tap like they have um trans canada brewing on tap there so yeah. if you go for lunch or whatever they have food and they have um they have these overnight oats that are really good uh, if mm -hmm. you like you know. but yeah super good vibes and i yeah. really really enjoy their coffee so that's yeah. it for me this week cool I, I just to say empty cup they also have other locations that are really awesome because i like the one at pine ridge and the academy oh. location is really nice they want a pine ridge yeah oh cool in Perfect. the village yep oh, yeah neat yeah. i haven't been there in a long time so I should go back there yeah the village is so nice there yeah. um <laughs> Okay, so my picks for the week are um, Duke's Burger Company. So I live in Niverville, and um, one thing Niverville doesn't have, we have a ton of pizza places, and a few places for, you know, lots of other restaurants, but we don't have a good burger place. Mm. And Duke's is a food truck that opened up on 59, mm. just north of the Niverville turnoff. So this is as close to Niverville as it can get. Cool. <laughs> and, uh no, uh, they do have a Facebook page. Um, I was really impressed with how diligent they were um, with Jameis's allergy because he's allergic to onion. And it's, mm. you know, always a concern when we're going to, you know, you know, I often will, will try to find places that are like chef run because, you know, right. chefs are more trained with allergies and yeah. stuff like that. And it's always disappointing when they still manage to, somehow make him sick oh <laughs> and, and these people did not even though one of their burgers is literally called give me all the onions <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> and, uh, when i told her that he had an onion allergy like i i actually called ahead to see if it was possible for yeah. them to to um you know like what's in their burgers what's in their sauce what you know i always ask those questions before we go anywhere yeah. and um she's like okay let me know when you come so that we can make sure that we clean a spot on the grill just for his and we'll keep him away from the side of the grill that we're doing onions on so and they did they and he yeah anyway it was awesome food good food mm -hmm. i'd definitely go go there again um and then my other one um is rocky mountain soap company one of my very favorite body shops for you know shampoo conditioner body wash soaps all that stuff yeah ice cream um i love that even though it's it's based out of canmore so it's technically not local the one of the owners is from manitoba so they actually keep a location at polo park 
because and it's the only place in Canada besides Alberta that has one okay. uh, and because of their link to to Manitoba right yeah uh, they keep that location um, they have tons of scent free products as well as the the products that they do have scent in it's natural scent so it doesn't trigger my allergies it's a lot I'll say healthier for you I'm sure yeah uh, essential oils probably still have a bit of neurotoxin to them but um, but not like artificial scents do. Yeah. And um, like, it's not nearly as poisonous. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so um, most of their scents are natural or food grade. So okay. yeah, they're, they're really great. And they also have a huge commitment to the environment. That's um, like um, practical. Like they're, they're not like saying like their stuff is like, super environmental they do have a recycling program but again they're not like phony about it they only collect back the stuff that they can actually refill like oh, wash yeah. and refill they're not like trying to tell us that they can take back all our bottles and then <laughs> and then just tossing them out <laughs> like some places do <laughs> do they yeah. do do you know if they do laundry detergent there Oh, they don't. You know, um, they have a laundry bar for stains. Okay. But that's it. Um, yeah, I know. That's one of the things I've struggled with for laundry. And um, off uh, podcast, I'll tell you the two things I've come up with that work for us yeah. because of my scent allergies. Yeah. And um, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. Well, that's it for this week, I guess, eh? That's it. That's yeah. all. Yep. So um, we'll have to make this, uh, you know, winter's here. Yeah, so we, yeah, we got to make a bit better commitment than we did over the summer. I'm yeah. sorry. I was a little focused on my uh, hiking goal. Oh, yeah. When Once my knee recovered, I was like, I need to yeah. <laughs> try to make up for lost time. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And and it was amazing how quickly. I think, I think we – we went like eight weeks or something without a podcast and i'm like are you sure it's been that long because it felt like a minute yeah yeah <laughs> yeah all righty well mm -hmm. thanks everybody for watching and um you know look forward to catching you on the next one yeah and uh you know if anybody has any real estate related questions please uh give denise or myself a call and uh i'm more than happy to help that's right all right Peace out, everybody. Take, Take care. care. Have a great week. Bye.